how can we make and unlock really the six months of your year when it's raining, when it's snowing, um, to be a little happier. Um, you know, growing up, we we love, or we can see kids like they love playing in, in the rain and they're really living in the moment. Uh, we call it like untethered happiness. But then as we grow up, it's like suddenly rain and you know, the winter season becomes the worst thing ever. No, no one wants to go outside, everyone traps themselves indoors. So we as a brand, it's like, how can we unlock the half of your year and, and really make you look forward to uh, going out even when it's even when it's raining. Hello and welcome to D2C Podcast. Today we return with one of our favorite first ever guests. He's a friend of the show, a client of Pilot House. He is the inclement weather shoe magnet, Vessi's Tony Yu. Now, Vessi and D2C have both grown a ton since we last spoke to them in April of 2020. D2C just had its 100,000th podcast listen, whereas Tony Yu's Vessi just celebrated their 1 millionth shoe purchase, which is just a huge milestone. Uh, Tony has a very unique strategic perspective about growing Vessi through supporting its key communities, as well as tons of tactical insights about product lead generation and more. Today's conversation centered around Vessi's growth and product in innovation and how some of their new products have helped them break into new markets. We're going to talk about how Vessi is raising their AOV with gift cards at specific price breaks. We're going to talk a lot about how Vessi generated 40,000 emails profitably in just 24 hours with a contest. Uh, it's another great conversation with another amazing DTC founder. I hope you enjoy it. On with the show. This podcast is sponsored by Klaviyo, the email and text marketing platform that puts D2C brands in control. If you're the leader of a D2C brand, you need a platform that hustles as hard as you do. Klaviyo unlocks the power of your e-commerce data so you can personalize and automate messages that keep customers coming back. D2C brands communicate with Klaviyo. Get started for free at klaviyo.com slash DTC. Welcome to the D2C podcast, Tony. How have you been? Been good. Um, yeah. Local Vancouver companies. You guys have been doing well, I hear. Yeah. Yeah. But D2C has been flying. Uh, but it's funny, like we interviewed, you were one of our very first interviews back. I'm seeing April 28th, 2020. It says episode 10. So we'd been, I think we'd been, din, been din, doing two a week. So we're like just a month in and we had you guys on the podcast. Uh, you were talking about some crazy growth you kind of experienced at the start of the pandemic and, and, you know, you were using the power of give back marketing. You're really lowering your cost of your ROAS. I just have followed Vessi like very closely, obviously as a, as a fellow West coast company here. And I just see you're constantly doing like pretty innovative things, whether it's a new product that you're launching or a new funnel that you're testing or a new approach. So first of all, I just wanted to start to say kudos because I'm always impressed with the way you guys appear to be kind of leading the pack in some ways in some of your marketing. And then, yeah, let's talk, like, what's new? What's, what's, how has the growth been since we last spoke in, in April, 2020, where it was booming? It's been good. It's been steady. Uh, we've been growing still. So year over year, we've, uh, yeah, grown substantially and yeah, just, uh, crossed our millionth pair of shoes, which is incredible milestone. So that we get some, uh, press release going out there. Um, but yeah, more, more products growing the team. Just got this new nice office, which is incredibly empty. <laughs> oh. no, no one seems to want to come back to the office after COVID, which which is cool. We have a nice like flex work from home, work in office, so it's a nice collab studio. It's a that's a really interesting point. You know, we I, we grew just as we you know as a, as an agency at Pilot House when we were twenty people, and our office still probably holds twenty people. We've now grown to one hundred and fifteen. Uh, and now the office is actually just somewhere where a few people work occasionally and then people kind of show up on the weekends, uh, to kind of get together. That's actually more of a social space than it is a workspace. Nice. Yeah. That's how we've how been using our office as well, except for we don't have to, we don't have people coming in on the weekends, uh, just, yeah. Yet. How big, how, how big is your team approximately now? Uh, we're 50 people, uh, 50 people, give or take. Nice. Yeah. 50, I think we just put on another 10, 10 people or something. Um, That's so maybe, cool. maybe we're at 60 now. Uh, <laughs> when, 
when you guys released, you know, and you came to the market and you had your, your first approach, uh, which was, you know, simple waterproof shoe with sort of the, the top netting, you kind of then moved it into this, the weekender style, which is really funny. I, I joked about you with you when, when I got it, it, it because it was, when I first saw it, I was like, I don't think I need that pair of shoes. Like I, I, that's not really my style. I'm kind of more of this, like, but then I got a pair and they've become like one of my favorite pair of shoes that I've owned. So Mike, and now you've actually uh, talked a little bit, let's, I want to talk a little bit about your next product release, which is a, another evolution of the shoe. I wanted to just talk like how how have these the evolution of your style? How has it like opened up new markets for you? How has the actual change of your your yeah the style of your shoe opened up new markets? Yeah, I think they're um, you know they're slightly different in like use case and how you style them. So I actually have one here, but this is this is the weekender uh, mm -hmm. or weekend. So this is a more like classic silhouette. Uh, you can dress it up, dress it down. But it's again good for any type of weather. Um, so for those people that like more of like a court style sneaker, uh, this is the one. And then I think the other one that you're mentioning is like this one. Let's look at the new I'm one in, here. I'm in a room full of shoes, so uh, so this nice. is the new one. This is the everyday move, um, and this is our more like athletic look. Um, yeah, super so, nice. So built for like a slightly more active. Um, yeah, we really took all the feedback that we got from our customers and uh, integrated it into this one. So uh, that's yeah, awesome. But awesome. Do you still have the too. same shoe designer? Do you still have the same internal shoe designer th throughout the process? Yeah, we have uh, we have new shoe designers as well. Uh, so we're growing out that team. So uh, there's there's more people. We're advancing the the styles and silhouettes, and we have uh, some new products coming out. Get another one. Uh, this is a prototype, but we have something similar, but <laughs> a fully waterproof. Uh, um, slipper. Nice. So this is a, a vegan wool slipper, uh, fully waterproof, indoor outdoor. So you can like take it camping, um, but it's really good for like your errands. You, you keep it at the door, slip it on, like go out grocery uh, shopping, or uh, take your dog out, uh, walk around the block. This is. I think you're really nailing it with the idea of slip just in general, just because it's like when I make put choose what shoes I'm going to wear, the ease of putting them on is continually like one of the highest priorities. So yep. like whether you can slip it on and, and I just have my whole old pair of like uh, boat shoes or something that, that I do. But this idea of just like absolute ease of use for kind of going in and your house, in and out of your house casually appears to be a big market. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's what a lot of our customers like resonate with uh, as well. It's like the ease of putting it on, um, and how it can fit with really any style that um, you're going out with uh, for that day. So it's really become like the front of the door sneaker. Uh, Very cool. You know, it's the it's the sneaker you don't have to think about like uh, the weather, like rain or shine. You can wear you can wear this, and it looks totally. good with really any any outfit. Can you talk a little bit about the customer feedback that moved you from uh, the weekender to this new, more athletic model? Was it people specifically saying that they needed more support? They needed us like, what, what was some of the feedback that moved to the new model? Yeah, they wanted something a little more uh, tapered, um, a different look, a little more support, a little more like uh, rebound in the midsole. Uh, so we included all those um, and we upgraded a bit of the, the lacing structure. So we moved on to like a new type of production process where it actually has a uh, more like, well, it's still a sock like feel in the upper, but it has more support uh, all around. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a more uh, performance wear. Very cool. Yeah. What, what's your most successful shoe line to date? So far it's the, it's the everyday one. This, uh, I have the original. Now. This one. Uh, so the cityscape, that was the original one. And then okay. this is the, the everyday one. So very like minimalist, uh, yep. sneaker look, uh, very lightweight and totally. yeah, dress it up, dress it down, but this is it. Uh, but we're, we're adding some modifications to this one as well. We're going to improve this one. Nice. Now I think when we had spoken, you were, I think you'd probably obviously been in the U S as well, but I think you were mostly focused in Canada. What has, what is your, what, like, what's your market look like now? Uh, we're like 60, 40 us to Canada. Um, but in nice. Canada we've hit like way greater saturation in say like Vancouver. So, um, I don't know how many people you see wearing vesties every day, but I, I see a lot downtown. Um, yeah. so it's been like a, a staple of Vancouver or like BC shoe and also Toronto, um, Alberta, um, 
and really these like core core regions within within Canada. And then in the States, we're really big in areas like in markets like uh, New York, Austin for the nurse and healthcare community. Uh, that's been really big. Um, Seattle, uh, nice. San Francisco, LA. Yeah. So can you talk about how, did, did, like, did you start by just going broad in the U S did you start by targeting, targeting regions? Did you have a strategy where you were reaching out to different nurse associations in these places? Cause I remember, uh, you know, you determining that, that healthcare worker, especially early in the pandemic and, uh, you know, really was a really powerful market driver for you. Did you reach out to, to make that happen in other places or did it happen organically? Uh, it usually happens organically. So we go broad first and then we dig into the data, talk to our customers and then figure out where the, uh, the core markets lie within us. And then we have that, again, that saturation uh, model where we try and hit like a 30% tipping point uh, within each specific demo. Uh, and then we, we really flip the conversation or uh, to be like everyone in, in the hospital wears besties. So that point for us is the 30%. Uh, because it is such a visual product, like when people get into our shoes, they start pouring water on them. Um, hopefully not blood in the, in the hospital sense, but, um, yeah, it's very like demonstrable type of product. That's so. cool. Have yeah. you, you know, figs, right? Figs is the, is the, uh, the D to C nurse and healthcare wear company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great have, company. Yeah. Have you ever thought of like a co? Cause you guys could, you know, I wonder who has more, you know, penetration with that community, whether it's someone like, whether you'd be giving up market share or like, th there seems like an interesting partnership opportunity there. Yeah. Well, Figs doesn't make shoes right now. We'd love to partner with Figs. Uh, so if anyone's listening, uh, we'd love to, we'd love to do that. Uh, yeah, we're big listen. in the healthcare We were talking community. about having them on the podcast actually. So that's cool to send that out there. I'll, I'll see if we can manifest that. Amazing. Yeah, no, I, I love Figs as a company. I think uh, what they stand for is incredible. Um, obviously like super well run, uh, profitable and uh, congratulations on the massive public success, uh, which has been great, but yeah. Uh, they don't have shoes right now. I think they partner with New Balance, which has been potentially a bit of the issue uh, because they already have a partnership in place. Got it. But would love to do a, a shoe collab specific for the nurses if they're listening. Very, very cool. <laughs> uh, we'll send that out there for sure. Um, you know, what I was saying, you know, you always, your website is such a, a good experience and you've got a lot going on. You've got a lot of really interesting kind of promotional things happening right now. We're, we're, all, we're talking about the products. Let's just talk a little bit about the gloves and, and arriving on gloves as an upsell. How are the gloves working as an upsell? First of all. Yeah. Glo gloves are great. Um, we honestly, we underestimated the amount of demand. So I think we sold out Maybe we launched them last, last Wednesday or something. Um, but now, now they're, they're sold out fully waterproof uh, knit gloves. So they don't look like very bulky. Um, yeah, but those have done well. It's really like for us, um, really our brand mission is like, we, we're going out and we're inspiring happiness in wet weather, um, specifically wet weather. So we're like athleisure, um, but for all things, but for all things wet. So how can we make and unlock really the six months of your year when it's raining, when it's snowing, um, to be a little happier, um, you know, growing up, we, we love, or we can see kids like they love playing in, in the rain and they're really living in the moment. Uh, we call it like untethered happiness, but then as we grow up, it's like suddenly rain and you know, the winter season becomes the worst thing ever. No, no one wants to go outside. Everyone traps themselves indoors. So we, as a brand, it's like, how can we unlock, uh, the half of your year and, and really make you look forward to uh, going out even when it's even when it's raining. So uh, thinking about the gamut of like, what, what could we create? That's kind of the, the direction where we're headed towards in that jobs to be done. And I was going to ask you whether your mission had changed maybe since the last time we spoke. I remember when last we spoke, you were sort of talking about how you were looking to, you know, go beyond a little bit of the, the waterproof aspect and break into other aspects of, of, of shoes. But it seems like you've kind of coalesced back on this mission of like, has that always been the case? Uh, this, this mission change, or is this something that's evolved as the business has grown? Um, it's evolved. I think it's become more and more focused, like after talking to our customers, um, you know, while our product is good for rain or shine, uh, the real, like, again, jobs to be done is like, why, why does someone choose Vessi over 
let's say another product like a Nike, right? And Nike is known for being like an athletic shoe um, and also like a lifestyle brand now, but what will Vessi be known for? Initially in like the next few years, it will be uh, wet weather athleisure. So yeah. Um, you Dry know, the next feet, time like Nikes, no one's wearing a pair of Nikes on a day of inclement weather, really, right? Yeah, but it's it's more than just dry feet, right? Like we can go entirely across the gamut. Like what what jacket do you put on when it's when it's raining outside? And yeah, my rain jacket. Yeah, I pers like. Is there a brand associated with that? If there's not, then we're gonna take it. I like it. Yeah, yeah that's interesting because then there's other all sorts of other. Did you just uh, announce your your raincoat collection? No, so. we didn't. <laughs> no, no, coming <laughs> in yet. the future. But, but how, okay, so now let's talk about another, let's talk specifically a little bit about your checkout. We have, it's funny, our team just geeks out. Uh, there's, I, I was just copying on, on, a, on some notes, uh, a whole bunch of stuff of our team kind of diving into your different funnels. Uh, and they were talking specifically about one where you're incentivizing people to raise their purchase in exchange for gift cards now. Can you talk a little bit about that strategy? Yeah, um... We've always had like a gift card strategy. So uh, gift cards for customers is something that they can, you know, give to their friends or family. Uh, it's a digital gift card, but uh, for every $110 purchased on the site, um, they'll get a $25 uh, gift card. Um, yeah, that you can use in the future. So buy like $220 worth of stuff, we'll give you a $50 gift card uh, that you can use in the future. So that's been... That's been doing well. Uh, we have upsells to uh, bring that purchase price up as well. So like hats, socks, uh, gloves, uh, which we're sold out of now, but, um, or, you know, like kid shoes. Um, yeah, that, that has really helped to increase the average order value of the basket. We talked about kid shoes previously. When did kid shoes launch? I think we launched them in, in, uh, it's June, June or okay. July. Yeah. And they've just done really well. Kid shoes have done really well. Uh, it's a small market, so it kind of hit the levels of our expectation um, to like how they would perform. And uh, we're not driving a lot of marketing efforts uh, to kids' products specifically because we don't want to be known as you know a kids a kids brand. So it is very like um, like our key demo focus, and then um, we have uh, additional upsells if they have kids. Oh, interesting. Okay, so this is an interesting thing too because we, we talk a lot, we've been talking more and more about first party data. And I feel like when you have a, such a custom site experience um, you, you, like, as yours, you're probably intaking a lot of data about customers as they come in. Can you talk a little bit about Vessi's first party data strategy? Yeah, it's something we're working on right now. So, like, attribution tools is, is going to be, you know, well, is really important right now. Um, just for us, it's really looking at like first touch attribution and where those first touch, first touch conversions are coming from. Um, but yeah, we don't have a lot of like first party data uh, that we have access to. Um, I know people are, you can go out and like buy third party data and like inject it into your, into your page. Um, yeah, we don't, we don't have a ton of that right now. So it's still very on the old school traditional method and just focusing more on like a first touch uh, brand awareness. Uh, the area that we were seeing it that you that you were doing was in your contest that you're currently running your lead your lead generation efforts that you're kind of oh the recent one ahead of Black Friday Cyber Monday and it let's just talk about that as a, as a initiative. Uh, the one we did last week, yeah, yeah, that that one was great. Um, so we've done a lot of these giveaways in the past, and uh, one it's really for our customers and you know potential future customers as well into getting them into the idea of like uh, the brand that we, we are and like what we're trying to achieve. So uh, we wanted to give away 200 shoes to really celebrate the wet weather, the rainy season, and also try and hope to get other people like uh, looking forward to the wet weather season. So yeah, we did a 200 shoe giveaway uh, and that really led to um, a type form that people come in and really apply for uh, those free shoes. We broke up the 200 pairs to be, uh, the first 100 was first come first serve. And then the the next 100 were given at random. And it was a just a 24 hour giveaway. And about how much uh, did you generate a lot of data, a lot of interest with this? 
Uh, yeah, it was great. Um, we generated a lot more than we expected. So uh, we had announced the giveaway uh, 24 hours ahead of time. Uh, I think that did quite, quite well. And we actually crashed Typeform and we crashed our Instagram page. So we got locked out of our Instagram page because we, I think we sent so much uh, traffic to the site that it, it locked us out. So um, yeah, we did well. Um, I think we got a little over uh, 40,000 applicants uh, to come through. That's unreal. That's a lot of data. And each of them have filled out a little bit of data about how they wear shoes. Like you actually got a little customer, first party customer data in order to get each of those. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, yeah. They had to go through a bit of a survey and it really, um, that was our qualification method. So it's like, well, like what, what do you, what do you wear, wear during wet weather? Like currently what do you wear during the rain? And it was like boots, vesties, sandals, sneakers. Um, and you go and answer that question, like, what would you want to wear instead? Um, so we're really like asking the question, um, to, uh, one, if, even if they don't win it, um, if they don't win the contest, like at least they are a little more informed about the product and our product offering, um, coming out of that, that contest. Yeah. Order Groove's subscription platform enables merchants to rapidly scale recurring revenue, deliver a superior subscriber experience, and maximize subscriber lifetime value. Leading merchants utilize Order Groove's powerful tools, promotions, and AI powered personalization to drive subscriber enrollment, optimize subscriber retention, and increase average order value. Visit ordergroove.com slash DTC to request a complimentary audit of your existing or future subscription program. Now, with those contests, because I know um, we've run contests before, uh, and sometimes the, the the quality of the people, you know, it, it's, it's a different list than your core list, obviously, of customers and people that have come in for something free. Do you mm -hmm. have a, a, a segmented strategy for how you'll sort of treat this list in an ongoing way? Yeah, um, so they've gone into like a nurture sequence. And then uh, for anyone who wants to opt out, we've opted them out of uh, a whole nurture sequence. Um, but these are the people that... I think like net new emails and customers from that was like 80% um, were all new, which wow. is uh, ni nice to see. Um, yeah, and it's just part of like a nurture sequence, uh, really explaining more about the product, uh, potential like use cases, like why they want to use it and, and uh, yeah. And your, so your cost wasn't super high. It's, uh, and so you've, have you already earned back the value of even just the, the cost of running it? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it was an immediate, um, immediate payback, uh, which again was not the, <laughs> was not the intention. Um, but yeah, it did, uh, did well. Nice. This is cause I remember you had such an immediate payback, uh, you know, when you went with the choose what you want model. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's next? What, what else? What, what like, you, you know, you, you've got a, 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 a good deft touch for immediate payback to accidental, uh, occurrences. Um, another like cool strategy that we, uh, tested recently was our, um, what do we call it? It's, it's called like the donate and save model. So we launched that with the everyday move. And for that project, what we wanted to do was incentivize people to actually want to contribute to the cause that we were supporting. Um, and in return, we'd give them a discount on the product. So uh, it was, uh, if you donate $10, we'll give you, uh, I think it was $20 off the shoe. Um, so your net savings would still be $10. Um, but we were able to raise uh, a large portion of money towards charity water in which we were able to open up uh, new wells and actually give clean water to uh, different different areas uh, within the world. Which is tied, and even just the water charity there is tied to sort of your, you know, it, it's funny, water can be, can be considered bad weather in some places and in other places it, it's absolutely essential. Well, water is essential to all, all human life. Yeah, that's, that's true. You <laughs> heard it here first, folks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. excellent. Another, another great strategy on the books. Yeah. So that, that one worked well. Um, yeah, we were able to, to raise quite a, quite a bit of money. Um, 
and also, you know, give back to our customers uh, in the form of a bit of savings and then, you know, their dollar would, would contribute to something greater as well. So we have a nurture sequence for that as well. Um, so as these wells go up with uh, uh, charity, charity water, uh, they'll be receiving the emails and they'll be seeing the progress of what uh, their contribution has made. Nice. And, and another way to deepen the connection with your brand as well, because you look at this good feeling of, uh, of giving back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, just like, again, like more ways of giving back to our community. Like how do we, how do we make the brand experience better for our customers? Um, how do we inspire happiness across the entire gamut? Um, yeah, we look to do that with our products, uh, but with also the community initiatives that we uh, put forth. Can you describe uh, uh, some, like, are, are community initiatives things that you have going on sort of all the time? Are they focused on the West Coast? Are they focused in Vancouver? Or are they sort of strategically placed throughout? Uh, it's global. It's, um, for us, it's not really, like, we don't look for, like, a payback on these community initiatives. But uh, we look to people who are doing good things in the community, like, looking to make a difference. We, we go out and we support them. Uh, whether or not we get exposure for that um, is really beyond the point. Um, for us, like, we have a bit of reserve uh, through the donations that we collect uh, through, you know, the give and get model or the other charitable aspects. And yeah, we just look to support the people that are looking to make change. Um, we think that's really important in creating overall like happier communities um, and really a better future. Amazing. Um, let's talk just a little bit about, about ads these days and what, what traffic platforms are are you having the most success with right now? Is it still Facebook and Instagram? Yeah, Facebook and Instagram is still is great um, for that that conversion cycle. Um, harder to track, uh, so we've we're looking at like different attribution methods to go through that. YouTube has been a great channel for us just because of uh, the influencers that we've partnered with. Um, and really like using them as uh, a way to explain how the product is like beneficial and how it's like amplified their lives. So our nursing communities, our pet owner communities, rowing communities, uh, people living on the East Coast, West Coast, uh, traveling as well. So these are all like niches that uh, we play a big part in uh, because again, like you mentioned like jobs be done, it's like this chew has actual jobs be done. Uh, it serves them and actually benefits them in in a greater manner. Um, so that channel has been, been great at uh, YouTube and also TikTok, right? Uh, TikTok's been a, been a big one for us. Uh, hard to track the ad spend, but we're doing a lot of partnerships, partnering with, uh, uh, we call them integrations and uh, getting the right people to um, talk about the brand message and like what the, what the shoe is used for. So Amazing. those have been our mentioned... primary spends. You mentioned Facebook and Instagram, um, and I, I know a lot of people uh, are having having challenges with these days. I have a friend actually who was uh, runs an agency, and he was just messaging, uh, sent out a message on Facebook the other day, saying that he's figured out the method of what you need to do. He's like, you just need to spend a shit ton and <laughs> look at your <laughs> look at your 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 you know your core metrics, and you'll be fine. And 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 that, it's funny, like we at Pilot House, we call it ecosystem ROAS, right? Where you're really just trying to. Uh, make sure that that you're not overlapping. You don't have things taking credit uh, in in inappropriate ways. But at the end of the day, you really get a clear picture. Well, even though it's taken some negotiation and some sort of manual processing, but as long as you have that, uh, you you can kind of still go. It's still the, these channels still really work well. It's just harder to prove it sometimes unless you're really on top of your numbers. Yeah, it's it's always been the same, right? Um, so when we you know take it beyond or before like Facebook, um, like how do people market, right? How are people driving awareness? And it's the same thing, right? Because at the end of the day, it's just, um, it's intent, right? Like how do you drive the right intent? And I think you do that with the right content, uh, speaking the right message. That's why it's like more and more important to look at uh, which are the channels that drive first touch? Like how do you build awareness and how like which are the channels that can build the most awareness and get someone from, you know, completely unaware to like most aware in your customer journey within like five to 15 seconds. Like what are those channels and how can you get the most exposure? I think that's what you have to look at. And then of course there's the retargeting channels that 
uh, you can use to retarget them and, and emails and so on and so forth. So, um, on any yeah. given, so let's talk Facebook, Instagram for a second. What do you, what is, what kind of assets would you say are your best first touch assets? Are they the simple videos that really explain the waterproof nature, show people live in life in a situation that the customer might like to be in? What are those best top of funnel assets? Uh, it's our partnerships uh, videos usually and, and YouTube videos um, that showcase like brand credibility um, and I guess like our, our technical uh, credibility, because even for us, like now as, as uh, a, a brand that we've sold a million pairs of shoes, like people still don't believe it's waterproof, uh, which is, yeah, which has always been the, it's always been the same, uh, same barrier to, to cross over into. Right. So um, those have been the best assets. Uh, yeah. Social proof. Um, use cases, uh, you know, very specific use cases, I think is important. So nurses, healthcare, community workers, um, kitchen workers, servers, uh, couriers. And when you think about those avatars, like on a platform like Facebook uh, and Instagram, are you, are you're going broad with those messages and letting those niches be sort of sought out by the creatives or are you targeting those niches and hitting them with specific creatives? Um, so we're using the creatives to um, seek out the customers. The interest targeting doesn't seem to work that well anymore on Facebook. And I think, yeah, if you're talking just like on Facebook um, and like iOS, like, like 14 and 15 soon to come, it, it becomes like, you have just a, a giant ecosystem of people, right? Um, and your creatives end up becoming the, uh, let's call it like the, oh, it's the hook, right? And if the more attractive hook you have or, or a creative, the, the shinier it is, the more people will come and, and be attracted to that. So, yeah. And the more hooks focus. you lay out, I would also say, the more hooks that you test, the more, you know, the more opportunity you have to hook people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of creative testing, a lot of like, um, yeah, testing out the like different hooks, um, in your videos. And, uh, you guys have helped us well actually is, uh, the landing pages, right? Um, mm. so yeah, you can capture someone's attention for like the first five seconds. Uh, but how do you complete that? Uh, how do you complete that customer journey? I think. People are really in, like they're interested at first, so they're going to click through. But understanding like more in depth, objection, uh, uh, going through those objections and answering those objections are are critical to the entire um, conversion journey. I love to hear it. We talked about it uh, April twentieth uh, in twenty twenty, and it only took a year for you guys to come back and sign up. It was <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> like it was almost on the day I think where where you guys came back. And we're like, hey, what about those landing pages? Uh, and I'm really thrilled to hear that they're working. And yeah, I think treating customers, you know, where they're at and, and just not, uh, not, you know, you always have that, that sort of like problem agitation solution formula is just absolutely timeless for hooking people and driving them further down the funnel. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so important. Um, yeah. Figuring out the objections, like what are the main pain points and objections to why someone wouldn't buy your product and like, just answer them uh, because if we're not in person, we're not face to face. Like I can't probe for that. So if you have like some objections in your mind when you're watching our video or you're on our site and it doesn't get answered, well, you're not buying, right? You don't feel yeah. confident in your purchase. So those landing and pages again, are really important. You mentioned that idea of just like disbelief of the, of the thing being waterproof and that being, but that's, that's, it's interesting because that's a challenge, but that's also the curiosity gap, right? It's like that, and I think that's so essential in marketing to be like, oh, that shoe doesn't look like it would keep me dry. It looks like a regular Nike or, or, or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's valuable to have that curiosity gap built into your product. And I think it's, it's taking you guys a long way. That's it's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, more, more runway left. So yeah, we have uh, more products. Uh, we'll go across the gamut for shoes and yeah, potentially expand horizontally. Um, in, in different product categories. 
Love it. Let's let's talk a little supply chain. This is something I've just sort of been talking on the DL a little bit with some of the guests. Um, and I know I know you guys, for instance, own your own factory or or did when we last spoke. Um, and I imagine you, you're, you're sort of having a more holistic control of your own supply chain has been valuable. What are you are are you guys worried about the supply chain in Q4, or are you all ahead of the game? Yeah, we're we're ahead of the game uh, on this one. Thankfully, uh, Andy um, crushed it uh, with that side. My my partner. Nice. Um, yeah, but now we have uh, we have more than one factory. We have uh, I think we have I don't know six or seven. Seven factories, maybe, and you know, early on, it's been a challenge, right? Um, but we are able to like lock in better rates with uh, containers, um, get on top of our shipping, uh, build inventory for Q4, uh, get ready for Q1 of 2022. Um, so, yeah, I think we're we're ahead of the game. Um, sold out of gloves though, and we doesn't seem like we're gonna get any more of those gloves in uh, anytime soon. So, uh, mm. that's a so not not all without problems. Good problems. Selling out always good problems to have. Uh, and then just what what about like you're you're already re- you have these big promos. You have this big lead generation campaign heading into Q4 Black Friday Cyber Money. Can you give away any of the uh, the strategies or, or techniques you're going to impl- be employing in the closer to the run up of Black Friday Cyber Monday? I think it's just uh, you know a simple communication, right? Like a, a flat flat rate discount uh, across the board. And just communicating that with uh, the best creatives that have been performing in the past, and yeah, adding an additional messaging for like the Black Friday uh, sale, and then we have our gift and cards that try to move the the purchases up. Yeah, the gift cards are good for um, when we release new products too. So in December we'll have new products coming out. So, uh, but yeah, those those will drive future purchases as well. More shoes or horizontal new products? Uh, you can wait and see. But yeah, there's a, a mix of both. I can't wait to see what's in my stocking. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. And then like, okay, so we can already see, you know, your, your plans your uh, your plans are huge. Your ambitions are giant. You're, you've refined your mission a little bit and it's become, you know, crystal clear for you. What, what are your plans in the next, uh, in the next couple of years? What, like, what are your, what are your big goal, big audacious goals in the next, uh, next couple of years? Yeah, I think, um, again, like thinking about that customer journey, uh, where should we show up um, digitally and physically? And, you know, how, how do we show up there? So thinking along the lines of that and, you know, what are the elements that we can use and strategize on, like to really own this, like what, whether at the leisure space uh, in our customer's mind, like to dominate that mind share is very important. Uh, because again, like we're not looking at, at Nike and thinking like oh, all their things are going to be waterproof. But for Vessi, we want anyone to look at Vessi and understand that anything that they create is waterproof. Um, but it's also like casual. Uh, so it's not like extremely technical, but it's, it's a lifestyle type um, athleisure wear. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing that I'm obsessed with lately is merino wool. And just mm-hmm. make like, this whole winter, I'm going to make sure that I have a layer of merino wool kind of on me at all times is my goal. Um, so th- I, don't, I don't know if that's in your plans or anything, but there could be something. I, uh, merino wool is not waterproof, but it's very like water friendly. Yeah, we've actually come up with um, like a version of that, like a vegan merino wool version that we're actually introducing in our slippers. Uh, but we can use that material and we can uh, create uh, more interesting products. Yeah. Yeah. Our ethos still is, um, you know, not to use any animal byproducts uh, okay. in our in our shoes and in our clothing. Uh, we just think it's more sustainable that way to not have to use like animal glues or leathers. Um, better for the planet, less water usage, uh, less waste. So, you know, as we go through and like reinvent different materials, like that's what we'll focus on. Uh, just looking at like more sustainable and renewable compounds. Uh, that we can turn into like the new form of leather that looks and feels and actually uh, acts better than traditional leather, uh, but is better for the planet. Nice. Good to hear it. I, I, I'd rather wear it than eat it. So <laughs> I'll, I'm, I, I, I don't want to eat the bugs as much, but I'll wear as many synthetic leathers on my 
on, on my person as possible. Yeah. Uh, that sounds, that sounds excellent. Nice. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. I had one more question because I know you guys have grown, you know, a ton and I just wanted to ask a little bit about your best. You don't have to single out the person necessarily, but what role have you hired maybe since we last spoke that has become like an absolute like game changer for you? What, what, what roles have been the most critical to hire for as you've grown? Oh, it's hard to, it's hard to put like the onus on like one, one person. Cause everyone really functions as a, as a team here. Um, yeah. So that's, that's, that's challenging. Um, but you know, I think all our yeah. hires like are, have been quite critical, um, in really building up this like holistic strategy because without the right demand planning and supply chain efforts, and then without the right marketing, without the right product development, like we can't have anything that we have today. So true. All right. Well, I'll let you off the hook with that one. Let's. <laughs> let, I don't think I gave you the question that we sort of use. We do all the time, and I don't. I think it's. I think it's still appropriate. It's not. It's not a, a huge budget. But let's say uh, the Canadian government, Bonnie Henry, to apologize for all the lockdowns, uh, gives us uh, gives you fifty k to use in your marketing, and and don't think. Well, who knows? Maybe think um, altruistically because that ends up making you more money in the long run, it usually seems. But how would you use this $50,000 grant uh, to, you know, in a customer acquisition sort of fashion uh, right now with Vessi? Um, I, would, I would give it back to our community. Um, Knew it. Yeah, I think that is if you focus on like your own customers. Uh, instead of just always acquiring new customers, I think that's that's always the most beneficial. Um, our our post purchase survey is like we're like fifty percent word of mouth, even though we spend a lot on on digital, uh, and we have like a forty five percent returning rate. So, uh, you know, focusing back on your core customers, I think is really important. So, I would look at that fifty thousand and figure out how I can amplify that to actually make it more valuable, uh, and then I give it back to our to our community. Love it. And, and when you are ubiquitous in a community, it just has real knock on effects as well. I remember when I got my pair, I had two friends come up to me and say, Oh, I've seen ads for those. Are they really waterproof? Are they really good? Um, <laughs> and so every time you, you become more ubiquitous in your community, it's going to have, like I say, those knock on effects, positive knock on effects. Yeah. Yeah. Well, same for you, right? Like everyone's still wondering if they're actually waterproof. So, uh, that's right. Yeah. Amazing. Nice. Uh, I want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Uh, if people want to go to Vessi to try any one of your wonderful line of products, except the gloves, which I'll have to wait for, uh, they go to Vessi.com. Anything else? Any other final words for the D2C audience? No. Um, yeah, no, this has been great. I uh, love chatting. Maybe we'll do it again uh, in a one-year update. <laughs> we'll keep this, uh, uh, keep this growing. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. If you're not a subscriber to our newsletter, you can do that right now at directtoconsumer, all one word, dot co. I'm Eric Dick, and this has been the D2C Podcast. We'll see you next time. If you're ready to access the proven performance marketing blueprint that scales your brand post iOS 14.5, if you're looking for the Facebook marketing system that's driven over $50 million in value for Pilot House's clients in just the last six months, then you are looking for Scale School, Facebook and Instagram ads made by D2C in partnership with Pilot House. You can go to d2cnews.link slash scale school right now to access the course for a $1,000 discount this week only.